SpaceX is gearing up for the highly anticipated static fire test of Super Heavy Booster 12, a key milestone test ahead of Flight 5. The installation of tiles on Ship 30 is nearing completion, and stacking of the second launch tower has commenced. Exciting updates await regarding the launch date of Flight 5 and future missions of Starship. Let's delve into these latest developments and more. Booster 12, which has been undergoing engine installations and system checks inside the Mega Base since the conclusion of its cryogenic proof tests in January, was rolled out of the building last Tuesday morning. Images of the rollout shared by SpaceX revealed that Booster 12 has two flight termination system boxes installed on its exterior, in contrast to the previous boosters that had only one outside the common dome area. During Flight 5, after stage separation, Booster 12 will return to the launch site to attempt the first-ever tower catch, a maneuver that requires precise control and reliability. The extra FTS provides redundancy, ensuring that if any anomaly occurs during the return flight, SpaceX can guarantee the booster's destruction, preventing any potential risk to surrounding areas or personnel. Additionally, the Starlink antennas over the booster chines are now square-shaped, compared to the previous circular ones. There will likely be many more design enhancements to the booster that are not externally visible. After arriving at the launch site, Booster 12 was moved towards the launch pad, where the tower arms picked it up and gently placed it atop the launch mount. Teams then began preparing the vehicle for the static fire testing. On Thursday, July 11, Booster 12 was subjected to a partial cryogenic proof test, including engine chill down. The test was most likely conducted to ensure the reliability of the booster's plumbing and detect potential leaks in its structure ahead of the static fire testing. The following day, Booster 12 successfully conducted a 33-engine spin prime test. This test involves allowing a small amount of propellant to flow through the turbo pumps of the booster engines to validate plumbing and engine spin-up procedures. The next test in line, the 33-engine static fire testing, will happen in the coming days. This critical test will validate the operational readiness of Booster 12 for Flight 5. At the production site, teams are continuing the installation of the new, stronger thermal protection system tiles on Starship 30. From a video shared by Starship Gazer, it appears that the tile installation is in its final stages. Only the forward and aft flaps still need tiles to be installed, and some tiles are missing on the nose cone as well. Surprisingly, the nose cone and other regions of the ship lack the secondary ablative heat shield material under the tiles. It seems the secondary ablative material will not be installed under every tile, instead, it will only be applied in areas that experience maximum heating and stress during re-entry, such as the flaps. Notably, some areas on the flaps have tiles joined together with blue-colored glue, believed to be RTV silicone adhesive. This adhesive is intended to prevent tile detachment from the flaps. Moreover, thinner white KO wool blankets are being placed between the edges of the tiles to better fill gaps and avoid vibration and heat penetration. In addition to addressing tile durability, SpaceX is also focusing on reinforcing the flap areas and sealing hinge gaps to prevent flap destruction during extreme re-entry conditions. Overall, the ship now has four layers of material for protection against re-entry heating. The first layer is the new ablative material placed over the ship's stainless steel structure, providing protection in case the main heat tiles fail. The next two layers consist of white felt blankets and mesh material, which were part of the heat shield on previous prototypes. They offer insulation and act as stabilizing materials to make it easier to place the tiles on the pins. The fourth and final layer is the new heat shield tiles themselves. While the new tiles don't appear to have any noticeable visual changes, they are reported to be twice as strong as the previous ones. After completing the tile works and before getting ready for the full stack wet dress rehearsal, Ship 30 will have to conduct static fire testing as an engine has been replaced on the vehicle in the past month. The successful completion of the wet dress rehearsal will pave the way for the fifth integrated flight test. Elon Musk has recently updated that Flight 5 will happen in four weeks. This means SpaceX is now targeting the first week of August for the launch. The construction of the second Starship launch tower is progressing at the launch site. The work was paused for a few days the past week due to Hurricane Barrel impacting the South Texas region over the weekend. Works resumed on Monday, July 8. The work that remained on the tower base structure was completed first, and in parallel, the first section of the tower was prepared for stacking. On Thursday morning, the section was lifted with the assistance of a crane and gently placed atop the base structure, officially commencing the tower stacking operations. It was then secured over the tower base with heavy-duty nuts and bolts, welding, and other structural fastening equipment. The second section of the tower was rolled out to the launch site early Friday morning. It will be stacked atop section 1 very soon.
Meanwhile, the final two sections of the tower, along with the arms and the carriage delivered from Kennedy Space Center to the port of Brownsville, have begun their journey to Starbase. One of the tower sections was delivered early Thursday morning. The remaining components will be transported to Starbase in the coming days. The tower sections that are already at the Sanchez site are currently being prepared ahead of their rollout to the launch site. As per road closure schedules, it is anticipated that nearly all sections will reach the launch site by July 19. According to an FAA document, SpaceX aims to have Tower 2 stacked by mid-August. The installation of the tower arms, ship quick disconnect mechanism, and other critical components will follow after that. The second launch pad construction is also progressing parallel to the Tower 2 construction. Elon Musk has indicated that SpaceX engineers are planning to build a flame trench for Pad 2 instead of the water-cooled flame deflector. Please check out my previous video to learn why SpaceX made this decision, the link is in the description. Starship 31, having completed its cryogenic proof testing at Massey's, has returned to the production site and is now housed in Megabay 2. Teams have commenced preparations for installing engines on the ship, with the next testing phase scheduled to be the static fire test. Ship 31 is set to launch on the 6th integrated flight test alongside Booster 13. Meanwhile, work on Boosters 13 and 14 is currently underway inside the Mega Bay, where tank sections for Booster 15 are also being stacked. At the Rocket Garden, Booster 14's partner, Ship 32, awaits its turn to begin the pre-launch test campaign. With several ships and boosters in different stages of construction and testing, the future of Starship looks promising. We can expect more frequent Starship launches with shorter intervals in the future. The FAA recently announced that it will hold public meetings starting from August 13 to discuss SpaceX's ambitious proposal to increase the Starship launch frequency and implement significant upgrades to the spacecraft. SpaceX aims to conduct up to 25 Starship launches and landings per year from Starbase, equating to a launch approximately every two weeks. The meetings are scheduled for August 13, 15, and 20. These public meetings are a critical step in the regulatory process, providing an opportunity for the community to voice their opinions and for the FAA to ensure that SpaceX's plans meet all safety and environmental standards. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Europe's new heavy lift launch vehicle, the Ariane 6, made its triumphant debut on July 9, lifting off from the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. The rocket was launched in the Ariane 62 configuration, featuring two solid rocket boosters attached to the central core stage. The side boosters separated just over two minutes into the flight at an altitude of 62 kilometers, followed by the main stage cut off just under eight minutes after liftoff, leaving the upper stage to continue the mission. The upper stage then performed a series of engine burns to achieve the intended 600 km circular low Earth orbit and began deploying its payloads. The rocket carried nine small CubeSats for US and European research institutions, including a pair of reentry capsules designed to collect data on atmospheric reentry and heat shields. All nine CubeSats were correctly deployed into the planned orbit. However, the upper stage experienced an anomaly towards the end of the mission due to the premature shutdown of the auxiliary power unit that pressurizes its propulsion system. The APU functioned normally during the first two engine burns and was supposed to power up again for the third engine burn after coasting through space. It was expected to operate for 48 minutes but shut down almost immediately, leaving the upper stage unable to initiate the final engine relight. The onboard video showed the upper stage tumbling due to the unexpected shutdown of its propulsion system. This failure prevented the upper stage from completing its final tasks, bringing itself out of orbit and jettisoning two re-entry capsules. The final release was intended to see the upper stage and the ejected capsules re-enter the atmosphere and fall into the Pacific Ocean as part of the deorbit maneuver. Instead, they will remain in low Earth orbit for decades or longer until atmospheric drag naturally draws them back towards re-entry. We currently do not have many details on why the auxiliary power unit failed and the status of the upper stage. Ariane Space is expected to provide more information in the coming days. Despite the anomaly, officials declared the mission a success and stated they would proceed with the first operational Ariane 6 mission before the end of the year. That mission will carry a French military spy satellite named CSO-3 into space. Conceived in the 2010s, Ariane 6 is the latest in Europe's Ariane rocket family, taking over from Ariane 5, which retired in July last year. The 62-meter tall and 5.4-meter diameter Ariane 6 is a two-stage rocket featuring a modular and versatile design. The launch vehicle is available in two configurations that together can launch a variety of satellites and missions into Earth orbit, the Moon, and beyond. 
Depending on the power needed, the rocket can be fitted with two strap-on boosters, or four. The boosters use the P120C rocket motor derived from the first stage of the Vega C rocket. The main stage of the rocket is powered by a single Vulcane 2.1 cryogenic engine, capable of generating 1,370 kN of thrust at liftoff. The upper stage is propelled by a cryogenic Vinci engine that produces a thrust of 180 kN in vacuum and is capable of multiple reignitions in space. At liftoff, Ariane 6 will produce up to 15,400 kN of thrust and is capable of carrying up to 21,650 kg to low Earth orbit and 11,500 kg to geostationary transfer orbit. Ariane 6 offers comparable payload capacity to Ariane 5, but at about half the cost, thanks to manufacturing improvements and other advances. As Europe continues to innovate in the space sector, the Ariane 6 will be at the forefront, supporting a wide array of missions and expanding the horizons of space exploration. SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket experienced a rare anomaly during a Starlink mission on July 11. The rocket, carrying 20 Starlink satellites, lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on Thursday evening for a mission designated Group 93. It was SpaceX's 70th orbital launch of the year. Initially, the rocket's journey to orbit proceeded smoothly, with successful stage separation and a first stage landing on a drone ship. However, during the first burn of the second stage Merlin engine, an unusual amount of ice accumulation was observed around the engine in rocket camera views due to liquid oxygen propellant leakage. This buildup, which is atypical for Falcon 9 launches, did not seem to affect the stage's performance initially. Later, SpaceX revealed in a post on X that the upper stage restart to raise the perigee resulted in an engine failure for reasons currently unknown. The team is reviewing data to determine the root cause of the failure. Despite the engine failure, the Starlink satellites were successfully deployed, but in a lower-than-intended orbit due to the incomplete orbital maneuver. SpaceX attempted to raise the satellite's orbits using the onboard ion thrusters and tried to update the satellite software to enhance thruster performance. However, those efforts were in vain as the satellites were in an enormously high-drag environment. Consequently, the satellites are now projected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and disintegrate upon re-entry. Immediately following the mishap, the FAA issued a statement indicating that they have initiated an investigation into the anomaly. The agency stated that they will oversee the entire investigation process led by SpaceX, and Falcon 9's return to flight depends upon the approval of the final report and corrective measures. This effectively means that all Falcon 9 launches will be paused until every safety concern has been thoroughly addressed and rectified. With SpaceX's proven track record of overcoming technical challenges and its commitment to innovation, confidence is high that the company will address the issue effectively, and a swift resolution and recovery from the anomaly can be anticipated. Thursday's anomaly was the first in-flight failure of a Falcon 9 since June 2015, when a Dragon cargo resupply mission to the ISS ended 139 seconds into flight due to the rupture of the upper stage liquid oxygen tank. It was also the first Falcon 9 failure since September 2016, when a routine pre-launch static fire test resulted in an explosion on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral, causing the total loss of the rocket and its payload, the Amos 6 communications satellite. SpaceX has logged 334 straight successful Falcon rocket missions since that failure. SpaceX successfully launched the Turksat 6A satellite aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on July 8, marking the first time Turkey has launched a domestically built satellite into space. Following stage separation, the rocket's first stage returned to Earth and successfully landed on a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. It was the 15th successful landing for this particular booster and SpaceX's 328 successful recovery of an orbital-class rocket. Meanwhile, the rocket's upper stage continued its mission, carrying Turksat 6A toward a 36,000 km geosynchronous transfer orbit, deploying the spacecraft there 35 minutes after liftoff. The satellite then navigated to its final orbit, where it will undergo approximately a month-long series of checkouts before commencing service. The Turksat satellite family consists of multiple generations of Turkish communications satellites operated by Turksat, Turkey's sole communications satellite operator. Unlike its predecessors, which were manufactured by various international companies, Turksat 6A is the first fully domestically produced communications satellite. Weighing 4,250 kilograms, it has a design life of 15 years and will provide services such as direct-to-home television broadcasting, data communications, and internet access. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.